Good morning, family and friends. Please stand to honor the 2022 graduating class of the George Washington University's Graduate School of Education and Human Development.
remain standing to recognize President Wrighton, the faculty and special guest of the Graduate School of Education and Human Development. Graduates, faculty, and guests, please be seated. I now call Academic Dean Colin Green to the podium. Uh, good morning. It's always nice to get a round of applause even before I start speaking. So that's, uh, that's a good sign. Thank you very much indeed for that. Graduates, hello. Good morning. You're here. Take a deep breath. Look all around you. Smell it. Taste it. Feel it. This is the moment, so welcome. Uh, good morning, graduates. Good morning, faculty colleagues. Good morning, guests. Uh, welcome to uh, the Graduate School of Education and Human Development uh, uh, commencement celebration of 2022. I am delighted and honored to welcome you all here this morning. To those of you joining us in the Smith Center, welcome. And then to those of you out in virtual land, Seeing this all via live stream, we welcome you this morning as well and delighted that you can join us. Today is an important milestone for our best and our brightest students gathered here this morning. I really want to congratulate each of you uh, uh, for persevering, for your tenacity, for your resilience, for pushing and extending the boundaries of your knowledge, and working with great purpose to fulfill your intellectual potential. I offer my deepest respect and congratulations to each and every one of you on your achievements today and look forward uh, to seeing you later this morning and also to hearing about the wonderful work that you are continuing to do or about to embark upon. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the Graduate School of Education and Human Development, Michael Foyer. 
Many of you know Dean Foyer as a thoughtful leader, an inspiring professor, and I don't know why, but he's an avid baseball fan. It just, it's beyond me, but he is an avid baseball fan. Um, also, in his past life, he was a disc jockey. He was an editor and a political activist. He came to us at Jishad in 2010 from the National Academy of Sciences, and he is the past president of the National Academy of Education. He supports GSHED's continued efforts to advance the profession of education through meaningful research that informs policy and improves practice. Please join me in welcoming Dean Michael Foyer. There's always that extra step now of taking off the mask. Good morning, everyone. Wow, to the wonderful class of 2022. Is, is anybody interested in actually graduating this weekend? Let's hear it. Yeah, terrific. Well, thank you, uh, Dean Green, for a lovely introduction. Um, you're most generous. Generosity is so important these days, even if it isn't always so evidence-based, but I'm, I'm grateful. I want to say a big welcome to all of our guests and friends and families of our fabulous graduates. In fact, I am so grateful to all of you because you were the support team for all of them. And I'd like our graduates to stand for a moment and cheer your families and friends. I have to go off script for one moment, interrupt this program with a special bulletin. Yesterday we discovered another bit of evidence of the George Washington University's impeccable good taste. Two of our GSHED faculty have been awarded the Bender Award for Excellence in Teaching. Would you please help me cheer Laura Engel and Kelly Cheryl Linkus. Really a wonderful, a wonderful um, bit of, of reinforcement of something that I as the Dean and my colleagues have known for a long time, that excellence in teaching is what makes this place hum. And when we have two of our rock star faculty getting that award, I can't think of a happier, a happier occasion for all of us. Um, so thank you, Laura and Kelly, for upholding and reinforcing and advancing the high standards of the Graduate School of Education and Human Development. Along those lines, um, those uh, somewhat tearful clouds that accompanied us this morning uh, symbolize for me a little bit of a less cheerful thing, and that is that I have to say a very, very fond adieu, I don't like to say goodbye, I'll say so long, to our dear professor, Carol Stapp, who is retiring from GSHED after only, get this, 40 years of superb service. A visionary leader, a writer, an editor, a grant recipient, a grant writer, an award winner, a public speaker, an advisor. Yes, those are just one third of all of the adjectives and, and words that I would use to characterize dear Carol Stapp. Um, her museum ed, ed graduates, some of them are here, um, have become notable museum leaders. Our museum education program, thanks to the work 
and dedication of Professor Stapp is truly world-class. Carol, we love you, and we know you will be in touch with us. We also have with us today some GW alumni who are very much ready, willing, and able to welcome all of you to that club. In particular, I want to say thank you to Ed Vest, who at current count only has four degrees from the George Washington University and is at my side in almost everything we do, a member of our council, a supporter of the school, a fan, and a great, great colleague. Thank you, Ed. Also, a brilliant announcer, and when he's not here, he's probably at, you know, Nationals Park announcing the batting orders. Thank you, Ed. Uh, I also am very glad to say that um, I would like to welcome you to give a round of applause to some of our faculty who are themselves alumni of this great university. Syl Beck, Lisa Rice, Andrea Casey, Karen Erig, Maureen McGuire Kulitz, Doran Gresham, Maxine Freund, Ellen Goldman, Kimberly Jamison, Joan Kester, Kelly Cheryl Linkus, and Mary DeRate. Let's have a, some applause for them. So one of the traditions that we do here at commencement, at our celebration, is give the graduates an opportunity to acknowledge uh, with their deep-throated gratitude and the loudest possible cheers and applause the faculty who were your leaders, your mentors, your coaches, your instructors, your advisors. If my faculty colleagues don't mind rising for a moment, I would like everybody in the house to applaud this amazing group. This is really one of my uh, very favorite days in the academic year and the life cycle of our college, and I am so deeply honored to continue to be here with you. As an act of real generosity now, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> and better yet, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, a very special guest. It is a great pleasure to welcome Dr. Mark Wrighton, President of the George Washington University. President Wrighton apparently flunked retirement, which he experimented with for a few years after completing 23 years as Chancellor of Washington University in St. Louis. How lucky for us that our very, very wise Board of Trustees persuaded Dr. Wrighton to become our leader during a time of global, national, regional, and yes, institutional transition. President Wrighton, we are so honored and so very happy you are here. Thank you for gracing our G-Shed family with your presence this morning. The floor is yours. Thank you, Dean Foyer. I've only been here four months, but if you look at the governing documents of this institution, it says that the president is a member of the faculty of all schools. But I resisted standing because these faculty members have actually prepared you well for future leadership in human development and education. I'm so grateful to have been selected as president. I found our students to be outstanding, our faculty creative, dedicated, and really effective. To our families and friends who gather with us to celebrate this great class of 2022, 
welcome. You're going to hear a little later from one of our former trustees, T.T. Lola Harley, and a distinguished new, new doctor, uh, Nirmala Narayan, and I'm looking forward to hearing both of them. To our distinguished class of 2022, I know that for many of you, this has been a challenging journey. You have been resilient and extraordinary in your commitment to pursue your degree requirements. You are indeed a very special class of graduates. You will be among the first to mark this milestone as our university embarks on its third century. As you know well, the world is changing rapidly and the demands of today's economy reflect that breakneck speed. In turn, our graduates must be skilled in new ways, keeping pace with changes in education, technology, culture. You must be nimble, flexible, resilient, and most crucially, you must commit to be lifelong learners. As graduates in the Graduate School of Education and Human Development who trained during the pandemic, I know you understand firsthand how much the landscape can evolve and how critical your work can become overnight. Higher education has been the object of much criticism in recent times, but when I think about the move from in-person traditional educational experiences to online education, I have to say that Americans, higher education faculty and teachers everywhere have done a superb job. At the George Washington University, with the support of your instructors and your colleagues, your passion for your discipline was bolstered with the knowledge and skills you need to be effective global citizens who will meet the challenges of today's world. Now, as you leave the George Washington University, you are charting a path into a distinguished future that will make the world a better place. As you join George Washington University's global community of more than 300,000 alumni living in 150 countries, I ask that you identify what makes life meaningful for you, what will be constituting activities that will make you good citizens. I commend your hard work and creativity and I know that you will continue to make George Washington University and the Graduate School of Education and Human Development very proud. Your families, your friends, and you yourself will also be very proud. I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the National Mall tomorrow morning. The prediction is it's going to be dry, and I'm really looking forward to this only at GW experience. Congratulations to our class of 2022. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Ryden. What a, what a real honor and pleasure to have you with us. Um, now I have another great honor and pleasure, and that is to introduce this year's commencement speaker, our guest speaker, Titi Lola Harley. Titi, as we know her, is currently a program officer in the K-12 education team at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where she leads the research and development team's work on exploring elements of effective educational solutions and practices that improve outcomes for students who are black, Latinx, and or experiencing poverty. Prior to her work in philanthropy, Titi started 
in the Office of Special Education and the DC Public Schools, and eventually transitioned into management consulting, supporting education agencies across the country. In 2017, she founded the Harley Consulting Group, an equity-focused management consulting firm that partners with school districts, state departments of education, schools, nonprofit organizations, and foundations. Titi got, Titi got her Bachelor of Business Administration and her MBA from the George Washington School of Business. Isn't that nice that one of our fellow schools is producing such fabulous education talent? And she has remained engaged in the university in her alumni years. In 2012, Titi was elected to the George Washington University Board of Trustees. And in 2017, she joined our GSHED National Council for Education and Human Development. Currently, she is the chair of that council. In 2018, Titi was elected, selected as quote unquote MBA on the move by the Forte Foundation and is also a 2021 Innovation for Equity Fellow, joining a cohort of education and workforce sector leaders brought together in a shared mission to improve life outcomes for black learners. Titi is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. It is a great, great pleasure to introduce my friend, your friend, G-Shed's friend, GW's friend, Titi Harley. Thank you, Dean Foyer, President Wrighton. Class of 2022, you made it. Congratulations. Please allow me to begin by offering my own personal congratulations to you. This is no small accomplishment and you deserve all of the pomp and circumstance that commencement weekend brings. Standing here before you is a surreal moment for me. When I arrived at GW from Nigeria as an international student, and when I finally got to celebrate my own commencement ceremonies from undergrad and grad school right here in the Smith Center, I don't think it ever entered my mind that I would have the opportunity to stand on this stage and personally congratulate a graduating class. I do, however, remember how proud and excited I was to be at the George Washington University, ready to start the rest of my life and, as you hopefully feel at this moment, ready to tackle whatever may come my way. The importance and significance of this particular commencement compared to all others that have come before is not lost on me. All of you today are graduating having taken a leap of faith and choosing to begin or continue pursuing your studies during one of the most uncertain times in modern history. The last two years and the speed with which we found ourselves in a world that looked so different from the world we had all known was and honestly still is overwhelming. Many of us experienced loss. All students, including you, experienced some disruption to your studies. Many of us experienced feelings of anxiety and stress as we contemplated the future. Only a select few made it, and you all represent that group. You exhibited resilience in the face of a global pandemic, the pandemic of racial injustice, and all of the difficult moments that came along with these things. You must never forget this. You did that. In addition to being resilient, you persisted. I was so inspired when Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson told the story of how she was encouraged to persist by a stranger during law school. It reminded me of moments when I grew overwhelmed and weary while in college, when things just weren't coming together. One particular memory stands out. In the fall of my senior year, as I was contemplating what I would do after graduation, I learned about a program called Teach for America. Although I had an interest in business, hence my decision to study at GW's business school, I have always been passionate about education. Growing up, my mother worked as an elementary school administrator, 
and it gave me a front seat view to the impact committed educators have on the lives of their students. I was inspired by the way she and her colleagues navigated challenging systems to see their students thrive. And I thought Teach for America might be my opportunity to enter the education field myself. So I applied, had conversations with current and former Teach for America teachers, only for it to end abruptly when I was informed I was ineligible because I was a non-citizen. I'm not sure if this has happened or is happening to any of you, but it can be pretty demoralizing when you think you know what you'll be doing after graduation and then all of a sudden your option is no longer an option. I'm here today to tell you to persist. Remember, this isn't new for you. You are resilient. You've just endured two years of unending uncertainty and you persisted. I wish I could tell you that it will be smooth sailing from here on out, but that is unlikely to be the case. There will continue to be challenging times. As you leave this place and enter the field, whatever you become, there will be people who say to you, no matter how successful you are, you can't because, or you're ineligible because. Your job is to persist. Show them that the very thing that disqualifies you is precisely why you are qualified and why you will succeed. Sometimes that voice saying you can't will be your own because sometimes we're our own worst critics. Shut that voice down too and persist. And as you persist, look for the new opportunities that perhaps were never on your radar because you were so focused on your original plan. My Teach for America journey ended before it even got started. But that disappointment made way for me to apply for and be selected for GW's Presidential Administrative Fellowship, a fellowship that allowed me to gain work experience at GW while serving as an ambassador for the university and getting my MBA for free. Won't you do it? <laughs> I later graduated in 2009 during what has been coined the Great Recession, a time that was considered to be the most significant downturn since the Great Depression. I didn't have a job lined up after graduation, which was not the plan. And I was not alone. Many of my friends and counterparts had their offers rescinded from organizations like Bear Stearns, organizations that were once on top and no longer even exist. So I kept my campus job at the Office of Student and Academic Support Services and persisted. This was not what I had envisioned for myself and there were many moments of frustration, but I persisted. I went on in informational interviews and reached out to people I had connected with over my graduate school career. Finally, after a chance encounter with a former recruiter I met at a job fair who had become the director of HR at DC Public Schools, I interviewed for and was offered a job as a business analyst in the Office of Special Education. It wasn't the path I had plotted out, but my persistence ultimately brought me to a role that allowed me to leverage my expertise and passion for business with my love of education. Oh, and remember that issue of me being a non-citizen? The thing that disqualified me from being a, a member of Teach for America? Well, as I got closer to my visa expiration date, and it looked like DC public schools would not be able to sponsor my work visa, I ended up being approached by a public sector consulting firm that had been working with the Office of Special Education. They had seen my work up close and believed that I would be an asset to the education clients they served across the country. Oh, and they were familiar and comfortable with navigating the system for sponsoring work visas because one of their partners was a non-citizen also. I ended up joining their firm and spent the next five years working with school districts and state departments of education from DC to Oklahoma to Hawaii. This experience led me to start my own management consulting firm in the education space and eventually led to my current role at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Today, I manage over $20 million in grants and contracts in the K-12 education space, supporting the work of amazing organizations that are working tirelessly to improve the educational experiences of young people, especially those that have been historically marginalized and overlooked. I share this with you to remind you that even when things don't go according to plan, you can know that things will work out because I've lived it and you've lived it. You've gone through the last two years and you are here today at your own commencement. At the other end of disappointments and detours you will doubtlessly encounter, hold fast to the knowledge 
that there is another one of these moments, a triumph, a celebration, a graduation into something new. You must keep this in mind and be encouraged when the next recession, pandemic, fill in the blank, unforeseeable circumstance hits. You are resilient and you already know what it looks like to persist. You have what it takes to endure the next set of challenges well and come out on top. The last thing I'd like to leave with you is something my grandmother, Abimbala Williams, instilled in me. In 1942, she boarded a ship from Lagos, Nigeria to London to study law. A rare feat for a black African woman at a time when women had only been given the right to vote for barely 20 years. She survived the depression, rationing, and a world war to finally realize her dream of becoming a lawyer. She too exhibited resilience through it all, and she never lost sight of the unique opportunity she had been given. She reminded me over and over again, to whom much is given, much is required. She operated in excellence, becoming one of a small handful of female chief magistrate judges and continues to be recognized even today for her contributions to the legal profession. And what's more, she chose to give back. She mentored young women who wanted to become lawyers. She served the community and through active involvement with the YWCA and became Nigeria's representative to the organization's World Council. As you move forward in the world, find ways to give back. Take all you have learned here and throughout your life and consider how you might make things better for others. Part of what excites me about this graduating class and GSHED in general is that it's full of people who have already committed their careers and by extension their lives to making an impact on others. You have chosen to be teachers, school leaders, counselors, policy makers, workforce development gurus. You concern yourselves with the human condition. And as you reflect on all that brought you to this point, the resilience, the choice to persist, and the people that supported you to get to this commencement, I encourage you to find ways to pay it forward, to be that voice that reminds others of what they are capable of, and that they too can persist. Because if the pandemic taught us nothing else, it showed us that we are all in this together, and that we are each only as successful as those who have far fewer opportunities than we've been given. So today I, along with everyone here, celebrate you, your success, your resilience, your persistence, your commitment to impacting others. And we just can't wait to see where you go next. Congratulations. Titi, thank you so much indeed for a wonderful, uh, inspirational set of comments this morning. Uh, each year, it's always a pleasure to provide an opportunity for one of our graduate students of the class of 2022 to speak at this milestone event. Through a competitive process, a panel of faculty, staff, and fellow students selected this year's student speaker, who is both eloquent, thoughtful and insightful. It's going to be my honor to introduce to you Nirmala Narayan. Nirmala is graduating today with a PhD in education as, member, as a member of the inaugural cross-disciplinary research team, Education and Inequality. Nirmala, born in India and raised in British Hong Kong, her dissertation was entitled Written into Representation the South Asian Girl in Cultural Texts, and this holds a particular experiential significance for her. Nirmala's passion for cultural representation and understanding in an educational context is echoed not only through her research, but also through her decades-long experience in Philadelphia, where she served as a university administrator and also as an English middle school teacher. It is with great pleasure that I would like to introduce this year's student speaker, Dr. Nirmala Narayan. Good morning, everyone. Um, so here we are, 
We did it. We're officially part of the COVID generation of scholars. Let's take a moment and feel proud of ourselves for we completed one of the most challenging, grueling, and tas tas tasking times and, and tasking rites of passage in academia during a time when the world came to a screeching halt. And in many ways, we had to reimagine and reinvent how research was done, establish precedents on how research should be done, and with care, thoughtfulness, and kindness. The past five years has taught me so much, and I shall share, share with you some of the key points. I began this incredible journey in 2017, which seemed like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Looking back at my Facebook posts from back then, I find a slightly scared Nirmala who shared everything from her thoughts on Basil Bernstein, John Dewey, and their friends, to her utter disdain for men who ride the metro standing up perfectly still and perfectly balanced without having to hold on for dear life <laughs> and actually having the audacity to read a book <laughs> with both hands. My, my first semester is filled with many memories from the anguished filled evening when I sat at my computer trying to construct my first doctoral sentence. Because you see, a sentence that required a perfect amount of gravitas. Because you see, I was no longer writing a master's level sentence. Meeting my sister for life, Jisan and Sabrina. I would never have made it through a single course, let alone a whole program without them. I gained so much in the past five years. Wait. <laughs> Gray hairs. <laughs> a love for coffee and an appreciation for sleep. But I've also endured the most incredible loss. The summer of 2019, I had to go home on a day's notice to keep my dad company for a summer as he underwent cancer treatment. But what I didn't know, that my heart would be shattered into a million pieces upon my arrival in India. The summer of 2019, I stood at my desk with a long road ahead of me. My comprehensive exams were in October. I had a proposal to write and defend. I didn't think I could manage it, but I did. All thanks to Sabrina and Jisun, who made sure that I laughed more than I cried. And my Amma, who wrapped me up with memories and love, in love and memories of my dad. I'm still not sure how I did it, but here we are. I will end with this truism. I did not do this alone, for I could not have done it alone. And for that, I have to honor and thank my father for everything. And my Amma, who not only endured a dramatic strophy teenager, but also endured a proposal writing, data analyzing, <laughs> dissertation writing drama queen who regularly made mountains out of molehills. My darling Aditi, Chithi did it. <laughs> You, my darling, are my constant. Sujatha, Jaram, Mahesh, Rupa, and baby Krishna, my darling nephew, I love you. Last, but certainly not the least, Dr. Lionel Howard. Thank you for everything and more. Without your kindness and generous space making, I wouldn't be here standing as Dr. Nirmala Narayan. Thank you, and once again, congratulations, everyone. I now invite Dr. Dean Fuhrer.
back to the podium to, to present the Dean's Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award. has done something remarkable. She's made me speechless. <laughs> Thank you, dear. God bless. I am um, honored now to uh, do some outstanding Alumni Achievement Award business. And as we gather to celebrate graduation in person for the first time in three years, uh, we are so lucky and thrilled to recognize not only the 2022 recipient of the Dean's Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award, but also those who got the award in 2020 and 2021. So first of all, congratulations to Dr. Gaetano Lotrachiano, who received the Dean's Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award in 2020. We are so pleased that you are here today with us in person. Guy, <laughs> here you are. Guy got his doctoral degree from GSHED's Executive Leadership Program in the Human and Organizational Learning Department. He is currently the Associate Dean of Innovative and Collaborative Pedagogy at the GW School of Medicine and Health Sciences and there his expertise focuses on team science and transdisciplinary education. Guy led the university in developing the instructional core for advocacy research and excellence, which is GW's teaching and learning center, and helped develop programming and support for GW instructors throughout the, the COVID crisis. Thank you, Guy, for all you have done and continue to do. Apparently, there's something I'm supposed to hand to you, but we'll do this in the spirit of Marcel Marceau. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations also to Dr. Olivia, and now I'm going to have a, a, a bad pronunciation moment. Not Dewey who received the 2021 Dean's Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award. Olivia is a counselor educator, a cross-cultural relations enthusiast, earning her master's in clinical mental health counseling here in GSHED. And whether in session, in the classroom, or in her daily life, she works to promote and advocate for an equitable environment. Thank you, Olivia. I don't think Olivia is here, but if you're watching from the internet, we love you, Olivia. And I am also very pleased to recognize the 2022 GSHED Dean's Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award winner, Dr. Monica Band. Monica, I know you are here. <clears throat> Monica got her uh, master's degree in rehabilitation counseling from GSHED in 2013. Yeah, let's hear it for rehabilitation counseling. There you go. Uh, and has worked to educate future counselors in her tenure at the Marymount University uh, to empower individuals in therapy through self-exploration and to provide supervision and mentorship to pre-licensed counselor, counselors in her private practice. Through professional memberships in national counseling associations, she has furthered her advocacy work for social justice and human rights. She has collaborated with community organizations on activities addressing disparities faced by minoritized groups. Monica, today we are so honored and thrilled to give you the 2022 GSHED Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award for your tireless work to help the community through empathy-driven supervision, consultation, education beyond the classroom and therapy office. We salute you, we thank you, and we love you. Monica, <laughs> congratulations.
Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> President Wrighton has indicated where I was to look for these. <laughs> See how nice it is to have a president who's been through this rodeo. <laughs> Guy, come back and get your thing. We'll do this. Now we'll do the picture the right way. Bravo. Okay, Monica. I'm not going to redo the whole speech, but here we are. Thank you. Good. A little bit of improv always kind of gets the blood flowing. I am very happy now to introduce our Associate Dean for Doctoral Studies, your friend and mine, Dr. Sharon Daniels, to the podium to commence what you've all been waiting for, the recognition of the class of 2022. Please join me now as we recognize our graduates. It is now my great pleasure to recognize our graduates for the degree of Doctor of Education and Doctor of Philosophy. I ask the doctoral graduates to please come forward once your name is called to receive our recognition of your great accomplishment. Please proceed across the riser to be greeted by Dean Foyer and then continue back to your seat. Nirmala Narayan. Kitas Germo. Brown. <laughs> Margaret Wetzel Bella. <laughs> Thomas B. Pimpley. Tamara M. Washington Shelby Leanne McKay Alicia C. Gray. Emily Ann Diller. Pamela Jean Farrell. Renfro Williamson. Jody Ann Johnson. Shante Lidra Onide.
Sabrina Jean Curtis. We now have the honor of recognizing those students who will be receiving their education specialist degrees. I ask the, ED, the EDS students, graduates, excuse me, no longer students, <laughs> congratulations on that, to come forward once your name is called out to receive recognition of your accomplishments. Please proceed across this, the riser to greet Dean Foyer and, the, and President Wrighton and then continue back to your seats. Thank you so much. Cinnamon Elizabeth Brown. Francis Fernandez. Jessica Renee Harris. Natalie Elizabeth Jackson. <laughs> Glenna Jocelyn Leary. Michael Anthony Wilson. Please give a round of applause to the Education Specialist graduates. We now have the honor of recognizing those students who will be receiving their master's degrees. A representative from each of the departments will call the names of their department's degree recipients. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Sylvia Morata Walters, Chairman, Chair of the Department of Counseling and Human Development, who will present the master's candidates from her department. Would the graduates of the Department of Counseling and Human Development please come forward to be recognized? Clinical Mental Health Counseling Master's Degree. Tracy Allen Hall. Jessica C. Stern. Rachel Nduror. Callie Elizabeth King. Nick 
Kia L. Adams Adamson. <laughs> Lorraine Rocco. Alyssa Steinberg. Samantha Nicole Hetrick. Carla Marie Kolb. Miles Arior Taylor. Cherry Dominique Nicole Harrington Sahaj Kaur Kohli Cynthia Wang. Julie Ann Beckman. Menahil Menor. Rebecca Ann Yunt. Juliana Duran. Paris Tu Ziazarifi. Danielle Janice Rouse Danielle Grace Rogers Simona Bixen Jayu Lu Jawei Zhang Masters in Rehabilitation Counseling Peng Kong Du Elizabeth Fincher. <laughs> Lauren E. Petka. <laughs> Don Carlette Jones. Rehan Soon.
See you, Wang. Samantha R. DeFranco. Heather Carroll. Kingsley Chakudi Ojubi. in school counseling. Aluwatosin Alau. Andrew Henry Bear. Kevin Doyle. Jessica Osher. <laughs> Sophie Harrison. Aaron S. Chetenda. Sandra Lerner. Julia Elise Lohman. Sarah Weiss Cowie. Kiss. Carol S. Barrios. Erica Michelle Jeter. Lawrence Lee the second Yvonne L. Gelbard Please give a round of applause for the Department of Counseling and Human Development graduates. I now introduce Dr. Jonathan Eckel, Chair of the Department of Curriculum and Pedagogy, who will present the master's candidates from his department. Would the graduates in the Department of Curriculum and Pedagogy please stand and come forward to be recognized. Curriculum and Instruction, Casey Fletcher. Jason T. Storita. And Elementary Education. Jeremy Stone Snow, Claire Heimbigner, Megan Demo, Daniel Israelson, Ian. Just
Jessica Stramaglia. Wendy Williams. Eliana Shearer. Dan Dana Elabed. And secondary education. Will Hoadley Brill. Please give a round of applause for the Department of Curriculum and Pedag Pedagogy graduates. I now introduce to you Dr. Natalie Milliman, Chair of the Department of Educational Leadership, who will present the master's candidates from her department. Would the graduates in the Department of Educational Leadership please stand up <laughs> and come forward to be recognized. Masters of Arts in Education and Human Development, Educational Leadership and Administration. Jacqueline Smith McCarthy. Summer Miller. Ebony Sherelle Brown. Emily Chu Figueroa. Jonathan Hugh Wilkins. Kyle C. Riches. Taina Paredes. Augusta Yada Karoma. Delaney Marie Hennant. Kareem Hafazov. Michael Christian Tangway. Now the Masters in now Education Policy Studies. Lauren E. Johnson. Kelly J. Presley. Educational Technology Leadership. <laughs> Jamel Lavon Daughtry. Deanna Cecilia Whalen. Brianna Madrid Harwart. Margaret Ann Pisarski. <laughs> uh, 
Edessa May Ortiz Bautista. Adriana Daniel Salinas. Brittany Boggan. Emily Jean Lindbergh. Emma Jean Lindbergh. Ahmed. Terry Lynn Turner. Lillian Vilmene. Nicole Willis. <laughs> and now the Masters in Higher Education Administration. Equince Tarquays Smith. Alexa Mary Vergelli. Joshua Smith Sr. Allison Marie Tuck. Hassan Malik. Kelvin Williams, Jr. And now I announce the Department of Educational Leadership Individualized Masters. Savinj Nabezade. Igol Bagarova. Sabina Abdulayeva. Ilaha Rasulova. Aitan Azimova. International Education Masters. Maha T. Malik. Abigail Maureen Anaya. Alexandra Mar Marie Cintron Jimenez. <laughs> Mallory D. Latimer. <laughs> Carly Ellen O'Connell.
Maitaj Gasimova. Jacqueline Damico. Caitlin Olani Chung. Grace Emery Glancy. Maria Nikoleva Ezekaleva. <laughs> Justin Alexander Hill. <laughs> Caleb Brandon Torres. Kristen Vale. Jessica Marie, Jessica Marie Christ. Kiera Lanasia Black. Chanel Johnson. Now the masters in Israel education. Caroline Allegra Dorf. Zoe Akabia Smith. Mauricio Friedman. Shai Ashkenazi. And now, the Masters in Museum Education. Marie Smith. Alexander Wayne Cotenoir. Natalie De La Cruz. <laughs> Madeline M. Sadler. Elena M. Free. Connie Yu. Bethany Wells. Megan 
Marie Colbush. Kara Pena. Maxwell Lauren Miller. Smith. Mina Catherine Altman. Please give a round of applause for the Department of Educational Leadership graduates. I now introduce Dr. Julia Storberg, Chair of the Department of Human and Organizational Learning, who will present the master's candidates from her department. The graduates of the Department of Human and Organizational Learning are standing and coming forward. Individualized Master of Arts in Human Education and Human Development. Nicholas Double W. Schwarak. Organizational Leadership and Learning. Jessica Lee Kronauer. Michael Brick. Amber Lee Hair Glass. Anthony Pacino. Anna Tilly. Linnell Chavers. Veronica Mamatova. Lauren Michelle Jenkins. Michelle Corey. LaShondria Andrea Dorsey. Megan Colleen Freeman. Alexandra Florence. Sims. Alex Stewart Bauer. Catherine Fisher. Ivy R. Zelvi. Christina Scott Fenton. Dar E. Jenkins. Charles C. Clunk IV. Laura Hesse. Devon Lee Henderson. Mawari 
and Nesu M. Makufa. Carolyn Rodriguez Alicia Burton Corin L. Ellis Janaya Begley Shaquille Nelson Simrajit Singh Asran Cats. Saja Motion. Randy Joy Capadora. Carter Pierre Indira Ferreira Karen Ritter Hunt Sarah Margaret Segel. Brooke Tyson Hines. Emily Margaret Vandegrift. Leah Christine Terry. Siobhan Doyle Holton. Janae Danielle Bramble. Courtney B. Schwink. Anne Elizabeth Anastasio da Silva. Katie Nisley. Jerrica Maria Anderson Edwards. Jennifer Nicole Bacon. Grace Sophia Varda. Lauren Kruskoff. Lisa 
Yvette McCoy. Dominique Debon. Taryn Reed Uhas. Nicole Pascale Benya. Junior. Sarah Naomi Sears. Benjamin Berkowitz. Please give a round of applause for the Department of Human and Organizational Learning graduates. Woo! I now am pleased to introduce you to Dr. Elizabeth Tuckweiler, Chair of the Department of Special Education and Disability Studies, who will present the master's candidates from her department. Thank you. Would the graduates in the Department of Special Ed and Disability Studies stand and come forward to be recognized? Woo! <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, in early childhood special education, Alicia Rachel Alford. <laughs> Inga Hurley. Emily Rice. Claire Chang. Kimberly Elizabeth Bowling Lewis. In Interdisciplinary Secondary Transition Services. Ashley Ann Smith. In special education for children with emotional and behavioral disabilities, Amber Morgan Karakner. Shania Roche Lewis. Renee Johnson. <laughs> Donna Francesca Pellegrini. Allison Brown. Special Education for Culturally and Linguistically Diverse Learners, the secret program. Yeah. <laughs> Nick Jones. Yeah. Raquel Kosa. Natalia Moisieva. <laughs> Jessica Lee Nicole London. Angela Christina Akers Walker. Miranda Irene Carpenter. Cindy Mo 
Maldonado Contreras. Please give a round of applause for the Department of Special Education and Disability Studies graduates. Spectacular. How I would have loved to actually shake all of your hands. I hope you don't mind that I was just doing the elbow bump thing. You're great. Love you. Uh, good. Okay. Um, it is now a pleasure to introduce Maxwell Gokala Noyan, Noyan, sorry, a 2016 GSHED alum and a member of the GW Alumni Association Executive Committee to formally welcome you into the GW alumni community. Max. Hi, everybody. So, as you just heard, my name is Maxwell, Maxwell Gokala Wynn, and I am a proud alum of 2016 of GSHED. Hi, higher ed friends. So, I am also a proud member of the Alumni Association Executive Committee. Today, I have the distinct honor of welcoming you to our alumni community. The GW Alumni Association represents over 310,000 alumni across the globe, and its mission is to advance the university by working collaboratively to strengthen and promote an invested alumni community that inspires lifelong loyalty through the engagement of current and future alumni. <laughs> During my time at GW, I found the courage to speak up, speak out, and work to create a better experience for those around me. After graduating, I was fortunate to be able to continue my impact by working alongside members of the GW community. As new alumni, I hope that you too continue to hold your experience in the highest regard and never lose sight of your impact. You have done the work. Now is the time to speak out and make your mark on the world. GW alumni are changing the world every day through their service to the community, contributions to their profession, and their dedication to GW as loyal alumni. GW alumni are committed to using their education at George Washington University as a platform for good for making the world a better place. In less than 24 hours, each of you will be part of a lifelong and worldwide community. I encourage you to brace our philosophy and stay in touch. Connect back not only with your faculty and cohorts, but with the larger GSHED and GW network around the globe. Get involved, attend our events, volunteer and give back. We wanna see you, we wanna meet you, we want you to be part of this. So today, as part of the end of this celebration, Congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Society. Okay, well, that was good as far as dress rehearsals go, so now we're all gonna line up and get this right. Just kidding. Thank you so much for being with us. A few uh, notes of acknowledgement and thanks before we adjourn. First of all, to the wonderful musicians of the Cherry Blossom String Quartet, thank you. This was a quartet actually established by four Presidential Performing Arts Scholarship students from GW, so it's a wonderful thing, and we, we, without the music, I don't think it would be the same, so thank you so much for that. I want to uh, embarrass my colleagues from the Office of Student Life, who most of whom are standing back there. Everybody turn around and shout out a huge thank you. <laughs> uh, 
The logistics, even without masks and mandates and COVID vaccines and all the rest, is hard. What they did over this, these past few weeks and preparing us for today, off the charts, fantastic. Thank you so, so much. Uh, this actually does bring an end to our ceremony. I want to again say a special thanks to President Wrighton for joining us this morning. It's a very special treat that he's at GW, and it's a special treat for us that he was with us for our celebration. Thank you, President Wrighton. I look forward to seeing all of you on the Mall tomorrow morning. Now, I, I may get in trouble with the constitutional lawyers in the crowd, but this is a good moment when prayer in schools is okay. Let's pray for a sunny morning. And we will see you all there. Uh, I think students are supposed to show up by around 8.30 with your regalia and get ready to line up by school. You have all of the instructions that you need. We will see you there. Thank you again to the great faculty, staff, and students of the G-Shed for the George Washington University. On behalf of all of us, we thank you. Congratulations. Go out there and change the world.